Welcome to the Business Greater Than You podcast, where we dive deep into the stories of men and women who have successfully transcended the frazzled solopreneur life and built productive teams with better lifestyle and income. I'm Nelson Bars, the founder and owner of Utah Independent Mortgage Corp. And I'm Liz Sears, founder and co-owner of My Utah Agents. We're excited for you to listen, interact, and grow with us. So please share your comments below and let's get started. All right, we're excited for our next episode. We're gonna be talking about office space. So yes, I love office space. It's like the funnest part about being a business owner. It actually is. Like searching for office space, laying it out. Especially your first time. It's like yeah, man. buying a home for your first so time. So fun. Yeah, I and wanna do it all the time. There's a lot of options. Yeah. So you guys okay. are actually in the process of moving Yes. from your third office space to your second office space to your third. Well, technically we opened our first home headquarters and then we opened an expansion office mm. and then we um, were signed a lease to get into this new space that's supposed to be built out and um, with and we were told it would take just a few months and our current location said we're not going to do a month to month for a few mm. months. We said, please. They said no. So we said, you know what? During when COVID first hit, everybody worked from home. Let's just pretend we're doing that again. So um, seven months later, it's still not built, and we mm -hmm. still have about four months. I remember when you guys moved out. I remember talking to one of your agents, and he's like, yeah, we just moved everything out because they didn't want to do the month to month, and they've signed the new lease, and, and I knew the space that you had signed the lease for. Yep. I was like, that's going to be a long time. Yeah. They're going to be without an office for a year. A year. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's going to be pushing that. But um, so we have a little satellite office way down south. So we got north and south, but headquarters were still working remotely. And then we just rent a, um, my mind went blank on what it's Conference like. room? A reception hall type place that you Virtual can do conferences office. at. Okay. So we have a lot of our um, events there for Women's Council mm -hmm. of Realtors and for the Board of Realtors. We have events there and there's the big space and smaller spaces. And that's where we do our team meeting every week. Okay, cool. So we've had to be homeless, yeah, but but we're in the though. process of working with the architect, building it out. So I'm we'll, glad you guys are able to get together. Yes. Right? In person. We've actually noticed there's a, a disconnect with our team um, since we haven't had like a true home base. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to have that back in place yeah, yeah. and have that again. So. Okay. So um, let's talk about the different options when it comes to office space. First of all, do you really need it, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> it depends on what you do, like what yeah. your business is, because um, one of our guests has a photography company, I was and just thinking they about never Andrea. get all together. You right, know? yeah, it's kind of a virtual team, right? But she did have an office space for herself <clears throat> that was out of the home that she could go to. She was away from all of her mm -hmm. stuff that she could focus and had. Yeah, she didn't have to be there with the kids and the nanny and everything she could go to to work yep away from home um so there's a lot of companies a lot of companies real estate companies especially mm -hmm. that they have a very small office for the number of people employed by them right right agents 50 agents but the office is only big enough for like 10 people yep and they come and go there's a cubicle and they share and they move around and it's like trying to catch them all in one place is almost impossible Right. Yeah, because it's rare that everybody's there all at the same right. time anyways, except for maybe team meeting, but then you're all in yeah. chairs. So My team, I really want everyone together. I really believe in that. I love that. I like the energy. Um, I enjoy the relationships, and mm -hmm. I think I get more out of them when they're together. Mm -hmm. So we've had a couple different office spaces. We started. I started the company in just a one-room, you know, conference room type space. I remember space. that. Yeah. With your gigantic monitor. Mm -hmm. Big monitor, <laughs> big table. Yep. Um, and then I hired my first employee and he sat on the other side of that table with me and we shared yeah. the room. And then um, we expanded to a space that would fit about eight people. We outgrew that. And luckily we were able to sign a one-year lease on that. Mm -hmm. um, and when the time for that year lease came up to renew, the the landlord, who happened to be the same landlord who wouldn't let you go month to month. Right. He didn't want to let me do another one year lease. Mm. Well, he said he would, but he was like, I really discouraged that. We don't have any open spaces in this building and someone's going to come in and is going to outbid you and you won't be able to renew. Yeah. Because, you you know, if someone comes in and says, we want the space, I'm going to give it to them if they offer me a 10 year lease or something. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So he kind of scared me. Um, I decided not to renew there and started looking around for space. We found a space not very far away that um, would we were able to seat about 22 bodies in that mm-hmm. space. Not very comfortably. We're more comfortable with about 15 in there, right? Yep. But we had a lot of people sharing and stuff. Um, I knew that we were going to outgrow it when I got it. And I was really hemming and hawing between that and another space that was much bigger mm-hmm. and twice the lease, right? Mm-hmm. I just couldn't stomach that. I just couldn't do it. And now I'm really glad we didn't because you know how our industry especially is so cyclical, right. the mortgage business with rates and things. So we did max that space out for a while. And then when the rates turned, I was really glad I didn't go with the bigger space because we lost some people. We downsized a bit. We're much more comfortable there. And it, it's not too much for me to stay. Even if I only had four people, I'd still think that lease rate is fair and good for what we're doing. I love it. So in looking for leases, so <clears throat> our very first one, which was with that same landlord, mm-hmm. was an all-inclusive lease. And the first um, expansion office we got is a triple net lease. Mm. And so when we first saw the price per square foot, we thought, wow, that's a screaming deal. That's so good. And then we found out um, more details about what the triple net lease is, which means that you pay, um, and I think it is slightly different. It, it's kind of up to interpretation. But for this space, we pay our share of the property taxes and mm-hmm. the building insurance. We still have to carry our own personal and liability insurance for our equipment and such. Um, and then we have to pay for all of our own utilities and our own cleaning. Whereas with the all-inclusive, that was all just yeah. part of the price per square foot we were quoted. Yeah, I think it's just really important to be careful to understand the total cost of each mm-hmm. lease that you're looking at because the sticker price can be kind of misleading. Yeah, I've always really enjoyed having an agent help me Mm -hmm. A commercial real estate agent helped me. And I wanted to ask you, because you do real estate, and I know you've helped some people with commercial, right? So how does a a person choose an agent when it comes to office space? And you think, oh, I'm just renting. I don't need an agent, right? I'm just going to go find a place to rent. Well, when when Shannon and I were getting our first um, couple places, uh, we had experience as far as we've been exposed to Mm -hmm. um, commercial stuff, but we weren't experts in it. And we actually chose to hire a commercial real estate agent because Mm -hmm. they understood the different clauses and what they mean inside of the contract. And they were able to explain to us what we were agreeing to and um, help us understand so we can make an educated decision. And that I think is the biggest difference is being realtors ourselves, having at the time, you know, 10, 20 years experience each. And yet we still chose to hire a professional because when you're signing a legal contract, that's a big deal. Yeah. And our new space that we just signed, they aren't even using kind of one of the more standard leases. Theirs is much more robust with some stuff. We're like, what the? Mm. So we even went above a commercial realtor for that piece and had our attorney review it. Okay. And our attorney came back and said, there's a couple clauses in here that could turn around and bite you. And even though it's your friend who gave you the lease, it came from their attorney. And whenever money's involved, if anything turns sideways, you're at the mercy of what's in the lease. Mm-hmm. And so don't trust friendship, even though that's wonderful to have, you put it in writing. Right. It's right. like trust your neighbors, but lock your door, yeah. you know? Well, I've really enjoyed, I, I have a commercial realtor that I've worked with now for two different spaces. And he also, we got near to buying a building. We'll talk about that in a minute, but mm-hmm. I've really enjoyed having him. For one thing, his company kind of dominates the market anyway. They, mm-hmm. they just, they know every owner of every building. They know what they'll do and what they won't do. Right. Yeah. And that's huge. <clears throat> Commercial people may not realize this. Residential has a ton of laws that um, govern it mm-hmm. in the United States uh, because it's considered like a, a layman who would be purchasing. And so the laws are to um, protect the common man. Commercial yeah. does not have those same rules. Like mm. commercial can really be, a, you know, if you have dog the eat in, dog. dog eat dog, good old boys, you know, however you want to talk about it, those relationships really do dominate. Yeah. And so if you don't have an in, you could be at a disadvantage. And mm. if you do have an in, it's the exact opposite. Yeah. Like you really have a lot of benefit on your side. Yeah, he would walk in, we'd go into a space totally dumpy space right and he would say i know the owner of this building Mm -hmm. he has been unwilling to put money into this building for a long time he just signed a lease downstairs and he's finally coming to terms with the fact that he's got to up 
upgrade these spaces nice. in order to put tenants in. And so I think he would go for this and this and kind of help me understand what to offer, what yeah. to ask for. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about tenant improvements a little bit. When you, when you sign a lease, a lot of times you're coming into an empty space mm -hmm. and you're going to want things like paint and carpet. Um, sometimes you're going to need even more walls moved. Mm -hmm. it, it might be a shell space and you have to build. Right. Or it might be super mild, like the space that we moved into. Um, we actually, our very first headquarters, we, it was a sublet, which means somebody else had leased it. Mm -hmm. And now they were getting somebody to sublease it from them. and um, Take over their lease, basically, right? Our colors are red, black, gray, white. Mm -hmm. And this was blue and tan uh -huh. in there. And so we got permission to change the blue wall to red. It was the accent wall, but they wouldn't let us touch anything else. And we're mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, well, we'll do that. So sometimes it's just painting an accent wall mm -hmm. and sometimes it's moving walls but even that sometimes i've found some of the owners don't want to do it they don't want you to do it right mm -hmm. other times it depends on how long the lease is right, right? if you're willing to sign a 10-year lease mm -hmm. they will pony up some money to make it nice right they're willing to they're willing to kind of bankroll your construction costs yep for just about anything you need um i was really worried about signing a long-term lease but still, we were able to do, we did a three-year lease. Um, technically, it's a five-year lease, but we have the option to back out at year three. Yep. And with that, they gave us enough money for tenant improvements that we had everything we had added. A, we added a break room, mm -hmm. we had all new carpet, everything was painted, right? We got um, a new closet with shelving put in and things. And so it was, it was nice. You move into pretty much a brand new space and it didn't cost a dime. Right. From my pocket, they ran data cables where I told them to almost felt like I was the owner of a new home and you're showing up and telling them where to do stuff. Yeah. Right? It was really fun. That's great. So, and you're doing that too now, right? On your right. space. Yep. So um, with our space, a couple of things that we chose to do is um, the new lease we've signed is kind of a blank space slate place where they're coming in and they're redoing the entire inside. And so when we met with the architect the first time, we just did all the measurements and we already knew the size of desks we wanted, which mm -hmm. was huge to make sure that when you build the office space, the desk is going to have good flow of mm -hmm. where to sit, where to put it, all those things. And after our first meeting, we said, let's bring our decorator with us the second time. So um, with our most recent meeting, which was kind of to fine tune, pick the flooring, pick the paint, the countertops, all of those things, even the material for the walls. So some of our um, office walls are glass and some of them are you know, drywall or half glass, half drywall. And so she was able to come in and help us pick things that were not on their way out design wise, mm -hmm. because for me, I'm, I like just what's average, you know, and I can sometimes see trends that are coming, but otherwise I'm not a super mm -hmm. early adopter of things. And so she said, you could do that, but it's going to be out pretty soon. This is a style that's coming in. And I'm thinking that's from when I was a kid. Is that really, <laughs> really coming in? She said, yeah, this will be a good one. And so we were able to pick the the flooring and everything that would match and in, including light fixtures. Um, so one of the things we chose is that uh, we put, we're putting in 10 phone booths, which are cool. slightly bigger. So somebody could like office in it, but we wanted a light right here because mm -hmm. we do a lot of zoom calls instead of a light, you know, from the top that would put you in shadows. Nice. And so just some of the other little things to, huh. to think of that way. I can't wait to see this. I'm so excited. Space, just yeah. knowing. We're putting one of those glass garage doors on it. So yeah. that way when it's good weather outside, we can open it up. And it really? Just has, and so we're, we're building a cafe feel space, which is a pretty good size room. I think it's like 24 by 24 that people, when they're doing social media marketing, things like that, you can be there with your buddies, um, on your laptops, powwowing. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a bar that is going to be like, have, you know, sodas and waters and snacks and stuff like that for them and their clients. And then we'll have the phone booths for when you want to go have a call and we're going to have those soundproof. Mm -hmm. So you can shut the doors and then we're going to have a few drop in offices and we joke about our agents keeping a family photo there so they can put it out on the desk and make it look like <laughs> in it's the drawer. It was like 16 family photos. You yep. put one out and, like, and like a little nameplate yeah. can slide in the door. But then when a client's <laughs> coming in, they can just be in the office. The client can meet with them and the client leaves and then they can rejoin whether they want to be in the cafe or a phone booth yeah. or, you know, whatever. Really flexible, right? Yeah. I like that. That's because awesome. not everybody needs like a office so when you negotiated your lease did they pony up the money for a lot of this all of improvements for mm -hmm. all of the construction work and yep now what about furniture 
None of the furniture. Obviously. And so um, we have found that Wayfair, I should get, we should get a plug. Yeah. We should figure out how to get a plug for this. Sponsor us Wayfair. <laughs> but they have a business side and the business side was able to get us a discount on it and mm -hmm. um, have it all shipped. And so we were able to find the dimensions of our rooms, get the dimensions of the furniture. And then we just did, you know, big, you mm -hmm. know, sketch of it and laid it out and putting our yeah. order that way. We did, um, we just found used cubicles. That would probably be cheaper. It was way cheaper. I mean, I think we spent, the cubicles are pricey. Yeah. And right? so are desks. Like, I was always calculating a price per butt. Uh -huh. Right. And I'm like, these are really expensive. And but we found this call center that had just gone under, mm -hmm. just disappeared and left all the cubicles there. Really? So the building owner was selling them. There was thousands of them. It was a huge call center. And we only needed eight. Yeah. Right. So we'd show up on the day and a couple of my employees went down and spent the day disassembling cubes and bringing them back. And, that's so cool. Two more days reassembling. It was a nightmare of a project, but, <laughs> but I think, hey. I mean, I think that would probably, when we were new and we were just getting started, that was a big expense, right? It, mm -hmm. I was looking at 10 to 20,000 just for these little cubes for eight people. And I think we got the whole package for two grand or something. That's amazing. And they're beautiful. I, I love them. Our yeah. first office space actually was 10 grand, almost really? exactly yeah. to furnish it. And we had um, three offices shannon's mine in the drop-in and then we had the agent one which we just put stand-up desks around it mm -hmm. and then we had a training room which we had just those tables you know that yeah. you could do training so just making sure it's oh and our admin desks yeah. up front i think that's really important if you're going to build a team um at some point you're going to want to think about office space right mm -hmm. working from home it's really hard to have your team show up at your house I think it's really hard to have a really good, efficient team if it's always remote. You can mm -hmm. speak to this, right? Yep. The culture, the vibe, and especially it depends on your industry. If you have customers coming in, if you're trying to build partnerships, for me, with realtors, yep. I want them to be able to come to my office and see that we're live, in person, mm -hmm. active, energetic, and, and together, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's a price to that, you know, if it's not necessary, if you can find a way. Have you ever dealt with virtual, not virtual, but um, executive offices very much? Yes. In fact, that is our second expansion office okay. is an executive office. So tell us how those work. So it's basically a building that has, if I'm thinking of the same thing as you, mm -hmm. it's a building that has a front desk person that they're the front desk person for the building. Mm -hmm. And then you um, rent whatever space you need. And so we just have a single room mm -hmm. that we have a couple desks in, but um, as a member of this building um we for one our guests can be greeted by the front desk mm -hmm. and wait down there for us to come get them and we get to use um their copiers and internet and such mm -hmm. and then we also get to use their conference rooms cool so if we have anything going on where we are going to have a client event um mm -hmm. or whatnot then we can use that space you can have packages mailed there yes. right yep uh, there's been quite a few virtual offices i'll go sometimes when i'm just walking a building trying to find office space you find mm -hmm. the you find the corner where the virtual crew is, right? Yeah. And it's always funny because they're all leased. They all have a sign on the door. Nobody uh, there. It's like yeah. crickets, right? It's a ghost <laughs> town. All these people are paying for this office, but they only go there mm -hmm. to meet a client yeah. occasionally. They don't sit there and work very yeah. often, right? They're probably all water skiing or something, right? They're probably yeah, all they're cool. golfing. <laughs> awesome. Um, what about owning a building? What do you think about a business purchasing a building? I think it's brilliant. I uh, The things that you want to take into consideration, or at least some of the things that have uh, impacted us with deciding whether or not to own a building, because we haven't bought ours yet, but then again, we are you know just barely two years old, mm -hmm. uh, is just making sure that the space is going to be adequate long term. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, that it is a space that's rentable to somebody else conveniently, that it's that would work out that way. I know you almost bought a building. So yeah, tell me about we got very close a partner and I. Mm -hmm. um, I was really excited about it. I just didn't quite feel comfortable giving up that much capital. Mm -hmm. Because I, I knew our market was going to turn and I needed to make sure we had enough capital to continue to operate and so we also ran into some problems with the roof inspection mm -hmm. you know it had been neglected for a long long time and so we were able to back out but really it just was it was cold feet about the roof and just mm -hmm. about 
the amount of the investment that it would have taken. We tried to bite off a pretty big building. It was mm -hmm. like 2,400, 24,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. That's a big it building. Had like 10 companies that were already in there, mm -hmm. different office spaces. And um, my partner and I would have filled up the building. We both would have put our companies in mm -hmm. and it would have been 100% occupied and was going to cash flow well from day one. Um, which made it feel a lot bad. My personal company's lease would have been double what mm -hmm. I'm paying now. Yep. But then most of that was cash flow back to myself from yep. the business. And it's interesting the way business, the way corp, uh, commercial buildings are valued, they're valued on cash flow, yes. right? So the the way to rehab a building mm -hmm. is to improve the, the leases, yep. to get more cash flow, longer term leases. And that all is, is calculated into the appraisal. And this, this would have been a great investment. It's just, I think it was a little premature for me. I think my partner was ready, but I was like, oh, I can't like just drain my bank accounts right now at this moment or yeah. we'll go out of business, yeah. right? But so what a great wise with thing. That. Yeah, what a great yeah. thing. I mean, you and I are in the real estate world, right? Yeah. We talk people into ownership all the time, renting versus owning. And I just, I just love the idea, especially if you can, you know, you can get an SBA loan for mm -hmm. a commercial building and you only need to occupy 60% of the square footage nice. and it's 10% down. You can have a tenant in there that helps you cover your cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, if you use a conventional loan, um, I think the one we were looking at required 25, 30% down mm -hmm. to get this building, but they, they allowed us to have other lenders involved as well. So we had 70% financed from the big bank, 20% mm -hmm. financed from private people. Yep. And we were going to do 10%. So it was kind of sim similar as a, as an SBA loan, but it would have saved us on some fees and it, and it worked better because we didn't have that much occupancy. Right. Yep. Fascinating. Super fun. I, I don't know. I probably will always regret not closing on the building, but right now I don't regret it yeah. because our market really did turn and our company needed that cash flow, needed that money. Right. You know, it's really interesting. Um, I don't often talk about the tow truck company that my husband and I began. I didn't even know you had that. You didn't? No. <laughs> yeah, we started a tow truck company back in 2005, 2004, um, right around there. And one of the buildings that we went to look at was $400,000 and um we could have bought it and we decided no we're brand new we've never done this before you know let's figure this out mm -hmm. and um three years later when we sold the company at end of i think it was beginning of 2007 that exact same property that we would have bought that we could have sold with it was selling for like 1.2 1.3 million wow and one so of those like things when you're like Ugh. four times your money yeah but the tow truck company is still in business really? in salt lake did so you that's sell pretty it? fun yeah way to go yeah, we did nice work so tow truck yeah. So that was That's a time, amazing. same thing where I was like, you know, what, what if we had bought that property, mm -hmm. but you just never know. Cause what if we'd bought it in 2007 and then 2008 happened? I yeah. mean, you just, I think, you know, I have a coach, he, he gets really involved in my money. He told me I can't buy a commercial building until I have a million dollars of net cash. Oh. And I don't need that much to buy it. Right. But right. I think it's about the security and mm -hmm. the ability to keep it afloat when things happen and, and, He's more interested in, in cash than real estate, but yeah, I think there has to be a certain level. I do think though that, uh, it depends on your company, but I think, I think most companies should have that goal. I think it's a great goal to have. Mm -hmm. you, we would, we did the math on that building. I would have made more money holding that building for 20 years than operating my company for 20 years. Isn't that interesting? It's just, a, it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Real estate holdings are pretty spectacular. All right. I think we covered pretty much everything that we wanted to on this. So Okay. Well, good luck out there on your office space hunting. It's the funnest part in my mind of owning <laughs> a business. Um, make it nice. Make it a good place for your people to come to work. Um, don't go crazy. Like, you know, the starter home concept applies to office space too, right? Yes, it does. Get something that fits your, your team now and a little bit in the future. Yep. And don't expand until you're busting at the seams. Yeah. Right. And then you, then you're ready to expand. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.
You've been listening to the Business Greater Than You podcast with Nelson Bars and Liz Sears. Our mission is to help lenders and agents like you. If you're either already a full-time realtor or looking to become one, and you desire to be highly successful, if you are both a learner and a doer, a hard worker and a total team player, we would love to chat with you about joining our team. Visit us at businessgreaterthanyou.com. If you're a loan officer or would like to be one, we have a path to help you learn the business and develop the skills needed to lead a high-performance origination team for better income and lifestyle. And lastly, if you would like to work with either of us, we would love your business. Do you have a question for a future show? Would you like to be considered as a guest on our show? If so, please call or text our listener line at 801-871-9130.